Of course, that demonstration was in the wake of a terrible crime committed in Nashville, Tennessee this week, one which I am concerned represents a growing trend of political violence in the United States. Violence that is all too often ignored or excused by the media because it doesn't fit the dominant narrative. This week, six people, three adults, three children were murdered by an individual police identified as Audrey Hale, a 28-year-old woman who police chief John Drake later confirmed identified as a trans male. So while normally the media has a pretty standard script to follow after the tragedy of one of these shootings, you know, white male, gun control, and an urgent hunt for anything on their social media that could represent right-wing sympathies, well, this time it was a bit different. This is the information you would have heard or read over the last few days. U.S. police have released CCTV footage of a shooter at a school in Nashville where six people were killed, including three children, and a warning that some viewers may find these images distressing. In the footage, a woman identified as Audrey Elizabeth Hale can be seen driving up to the Covenant School. Armed with two assault-type guns and a pistol, she breaks in by shooting through glass doors. She was later shot dead by police who say that Hale identified, as we said, as being transgender. And she was a former student of the school. Well, this all brings up the very sad question. Who is to blame? And the media had plenty of ideas about this. American ABC national correspondent Terry Moran framed the issue this way. Uh, it state of Tennessee earlier this month passed and the governor signed a bill that banned transgender medical care for minors, as well as uh, a law that prohibited adult entertainment, including male and female impersonators after a series of drag show controversies in that state. See what's going on here? This was a view that was echoed all over the left, including the sewer that is the Chinese spyware app TikTok. I wonder if the parents of the victims of the Nashville shooting today would still have their children if these trans bills in Tennessee were never a thing. I'm not a parent, but if I were, I'd be real, real mad at the government. I'd be real, real mad at the government. And sadly, that view is not uncommon out there. But think about the insane moral blackmail that's going on. If you don't accept the transgender political program and cheer it at every turn, well, gosh, who knows what could happen? Frankly, it's disgusting. And of course, the media was very keen to avoid misgendering the shooter because, well, six dead is a statistic, but misgendering is a tragedy, to coin a phrase. All of this took place against a background of increasing militancy in some circles. The shooting took place days before a widely circulated event called the Trans Day of Vengeance, which suggested that trans people in America were under attack and victims of genocide. Really? Look, figures are hard to come by, but the Williams Institute at the UCLA Law School says that there are 1.6 million trans-identifying people in the U.S., According to the Human Rights Campaign, at least 38 trans people were murdered in the U.S. last year. Now, all of those deaths are tragic, but in terms of deaths per 100,000, which is how these things are measured against population, that works out to be three homicides per 100,000 per year. Compare that to the rate in the general population, which, according to the Centers for Disease Control, is around 7.8 per 100,000. So, while every murder is a horrible thing, does that look like genocide? Well, I'm sorry, not quite. Now, I'm not suggesting that trans people don't have their challenges and struggles or that they don't face discrimination. Of course not. That's ridiculous. That would be stupid. Rather, what I am suggesting is that the American media is, with this issue and many others, now playing with fire. With this story, it has attempted to turn the narrative around so that Suddenly, the killer is not the problem, but some terrible circumstances pushed from the right in the way it increasingly amplifies voices on the left who treat any disagreement, whether about the more radical claims of political trans activists or anything else, as something on the order of an existential threat.